Hi everyone, my name is Roshan Sangani. I'm one of the tutors here at MST. I'm a first year resident, so I've kind of finished through med school. Right now I'm doing my intern year, and eventually I'd like to go into ophthalmology. One of my specialties is just med school application. And that's why I'd like to give you this talk on kind of optimizing gap years. There's a famous saying, it says that all roads lead to Rome. And for us, you know, the ultimate Rome is obviously getting into med school. And I can tell you, having been through it is an amazing experience. It's something where you'll kind of be just amazed by how much you learn. And gap years are a perfect way to just transition into med school. We want to talk about different types of gap years. And we're going to talk about different ways that you can kind of maximize your med school application. And what I want to talk about after that is just, and it'll kind of be within the whole presentation, is how to highlight that experience. So, you know, a lot of when it goes to medical school and getting in is how do you come off as an interviewee? You know, you guys are all probably brilliant people. You've done a lot of hard work. So how do you showcase yourself on the next level, past the test scores, past the letters of recommendation? It's how you talk about yourself and how you talk about your experiences. Okay, so that's also something we're definitely going to be able to talk about. If you feel like you have a more in-depth question or you want to go over things a little bit even more, you can always call, call us or email us. And there's the email listed, uh, hq at medschooltutors.com, and you can get a personalized consultation from us. Okay, so really quickly though, who who are we at MST? So we have. 14 years of experience of tutoring. We tutor from pre-med through residency. So I myself have been with MST for about a year. And so I've taught um, students in both step one, step two, and step three. We have people like me who are residents, but we also have people who are attendings as well. So people who have finished their training and then continue to teach and continue to they have years of experience. And then we have also fellow med students, you know, people who have done, taken the MCAT, they, they're brand new and familiar with the new resources. And they, they you know, we have everyone at our, your disposal to kind of help you maximize your studying and prep. So why take a gap year in the first place? So first of all, you know, I think it just gives you professional and personal experiences. Many of you will be coming from a background where you went through an undergraduate university. You may have done more of a science background. You more, may have done you know, something that you did your med school requirements, but didn't really do too much science. Or maybe you were in a completely different field altogether and realized that you may be interested in medicine. But all the same, you get a lot of experience doing a gap year because it's just, you will be in medicine for the rest of your life, everything considered. So it's good to have some different experience, okay? And the big thing is that if you feel that you're not ready or you don't feel like you're the best applicant for med school, but you have like a set med school that you'd really like to go to. For me, I'm from the East Coast uh, and I've been here my whole life. So I really wanted to go to a med school on the East Coast. So if that's kind of something similar that you have a similar sentiment, it's good to have that gap here because it just makes you all the more competitive applicant. And so it gets you in a better place to go to that special school or special area that you want to be to. A lot of people that I know who have done a gap year, that experience really helps them through med school. And part of that is just, you know, they have, they've learned what works for them in terms of studying, work-life balance, but also it gives them some perspective that, you know, they knew what they, they were doing in their gap year and while they liked it, you know, maybe they felt like, you know, they wanted even more fulfillment. And then those are the ones who I found enjoyed med school the most. They had done a gap year. They had seen what it was like on the other side to be a doctor, to be a clinician. And it just made them so much more appreciative of the process to getting there. If we had to narrow down gap years, I would say there's four main categories. You could do a post bac program or a master's program. And these are becoming very, very common. And we'll kind of go over those. The next is clinical research. So you're working in a lab. And when we talk about clinical research, we talk about either bench research or we talk about non-bench. So Bench research means that you're you're kind of down in the trenches. You're going over clinical data. You're definitely going through charts, old retrospective data, and then there's also you know more in depth research where you have you know you're doing in field work. So you're you know that involves like microscopes, like you know different types of setups where you're not necessarily going over more clinical stuff. You're actually really just doing research in a specific area or field. The next thing would be uh, for a gap year perspective is scribing or doing shadowing. Scribing is basically, as you, many of you may know, it's just you're taking notes for another physician 
And in between, you know, you can form a pretty good relationship with those people that you work with. And then shadowing is very similar where you just see what it's like to be a doctor. Um, you know, you can do inpatient shadowing, which is a little harder. And very commonly, doctors, I would say, are more than happy to have people shadow them on an outpatient basis. And then finally, the last thing I would say is doing non-medically related work. And this is, I would say, something like, you know, doing a Teach for America. This is the one I would say is the least common, but it can be something that I would really recommend if you're the right type of applicant. So a post-bac program. I would say this is best for individuals who are really looking to make a career change. And did, they didn't actually even take the pre-med classes in college because in order to apply for med school, you need to have, as you guys know, those science classes, you know, the physics, the organic chemistry, the biology. And so that's an essential part of your application. And so if you didn't do those, if suppose you were an English major, you were a history major, or you did engineering and you didn't have those sciences, a post bag might be perfect for you because that's how you get those requirements in. The other benefit of a post bag is that someone who felt like in college, they didn't really have a direction. They didn't know what they wanted to do from a career standpoint. So as a result, they decided, okay, I was taking these classes, but I didn't really have it that much passion. And my GPA did reflect that. And so if they think, if you think, for instance, that your GPA is maybe going to preclude you from doing well from an application standpoint, this is a great way to prove to, you know, admissions committees that, and like I said, it's all about how you present yourself in the interview. But if they see that, you know, you didn't have the best GPA in undergrad, but then in your post program, when you're doing what you really are passionate about, which in this instance would be kind of sciences and medicine, you really were stellar, then they clearly see that, you know, when you're in a field that you really find yourself interested in, you're going to do well. And the last people who I would really benefit are those who want to just see what medical school is like, because a lot of these, they'll have you replicate at least the first half of what med school is like. And so these people, especially my med school, I could tell had a leg up, especially when they had to get used to, because I will say getting into med school, it was a big adjustment in terms of like the rigor and how much hours we need to be putting in and how efficient you need to be with studying. And the people from the post back programs, they definitely were much more experienced and much more up to speed in that regards. Uh, so how would you go about kind of doing a post back program? I would recommend, you know, looking up programs online and looking up, you know, what their strengths are. I would say one big thing to look for, though, is, that, as I mentioned below, is, is does this program have a linkage program? Now, a linkage program basically means that if you do well enough in, the, you know, your post back program, and you get, a, you know, a certain GPA requirement, they will interview you for med school. I went to Drexel Medical School. Drexel does have a post back program, for instance. So suppose that I did a, the Drexel post back program. If they, you know, I was doing well and I got a certain NCAT score, I would have the opportunity to interview as a pre-selected candidate. And so they have a certain amount of spots that they reserve just for post back students. And that can vary year from year, but it gives you a smaller pool to be selected from and obviously will just increase your chances. So in terms of benefits, you can establish some really good connections. If, for instance, you feel like you're doing well, you have a good relationship with some of your professors, it just makes the likelihood of you getting a conditional acceptance all the more likely, provided you have the other requirements. And that's what I would say is that a caveat with these post back programs is that it's not a guarantee into med school. And so you still have to work hard and you do have to do well in order to then get admission. And then the other thing is, like I said, it's very valuable experience. You're you definitely have a leg ahead of a lot of the other people coming into med school having done a post back program. So what are some you know, issues that may arise when choosing to do them? One is cost. Some of these have a significant amount of tuition. And for many of us, our choices may be dependent on cost and financial stability. And that's completely understandable. Some of them do offer scholarships and other opportunities. But for the most part, it is going to be almost similar to a year of additional tuition. Not necessarily as expensive as med school, but would be expensive. Can you get loans for them? Definitely. So it's just something to consider. And the other thing is it is pretty time intensive. It's almost equivalent to doing a year of med school. And so based on that, you have to be ready to know that you're going to be really working hard. So for a lot of people who are coming from undergrad, feel a little bit burnt out from undergrad, this may not be the best idea because you're kind of getting right back on the grind. So the next thing I would say is doing clinical research. So who is like the best candidate for this? I would say it's people with very good objective measures, you know, very good GPA. They have those MCAT scores that are meeting the threshold for a lot of these universities, 
But they notice that from an application standpoint, they're a little bit one dimensional. Their GPA and their MCAT will definitely get them in the door, but what will they talk about during their interviews? And so that's why if you have some clinical research, you can definitely highlight yourself as a much better and more well-rounded applicant. How would you go about doing this? There's many clinical research programs online, and this is where it's very important to use your undergraduate university as a resource. And just asking them, do we do research at our undergraduate university, which many undergraduates also have a med school, or do, you know, do we have any historical contacts? The one key thing about doing clinical research is that it is great to do research, but very often, unfortunately, for better or for worse, we're judged based on publications and how productive we are. And so you want to go to an established research program. And while it's, you, you may have a great relationship with one of your professors or one of your colleagues in, under, in undergrad or another setting, you want to be with someone who has been able to consistently do publications and has a history of taking on students. So they have, you have a clear defined role in the lab, but also can get a lot done especially those labs that they mentioned specifically that a lot of people during their gap year have gone to this research program and then have gone on to med school. And that's really what you're looking for when you decide if you want to do clinical research. The big thing in terms of clinical research is, one, it can be that missing piece in application. It really gives you a lot to talk about because if you're in, an old, in your own lab and you have you know, you were running the experiments or you were, you were forming the protocol or you were instrumental in determining what the question is that you're trying to answer, you can talk a lot about it on your application. It just makes you seem so much more informed and well-rounded. And the other thing is it's a great opportunity for a strong letter of recommendation. And that's something I want to highlight is that especially people at bigger universities, it is hard to form a relationship with a teacher. And if you guys are still in school, that's something I would recommend is that, you know, kind of keep that in the back of your head. If you find that you really enjoy one of your teacher's teaching styles, you find that you get along with him or her really well, try to form a rapport with them and try to remember that, you know, you will need players of recommendation for med school. But clinical research, they're working with you almost every day. So they really get to know you. They can, you know, highlight your work ethic and they have a lot of credibility because this is someone that you clearly have worked with. And so they were evaluating you on day in, day out basis so they can really vouch for you in terms of your skills. But there are risks and there are cons. So I would say that there's a lot of variability with these research years. And that's why, like I said, it's important to go and establish your place. But even then, there can be variance in terms of how much you get done, how many publications you're able to accomplish, and how much time you're really spending on the job. The benefits of post back programs or doing like kind of scribe work is that you know when, you know when you're going in and when you're finished. And you dictate a lot of that. In a clinical research setting, though, the work needs to be done and there are deadlines and often you will have to spend some long hours. And so you don't really know always week in, week out how much time you need to be on the job. The next thing I want to talk about is medical scribing and shadowing. This can be a really good opportunity to really also just see what medicine is like. Once again, who is the best person for this? I would say it's similar to the clinical research here, but just a different flavor. It's these people who have very good GPAs, very good MCAT scores. They may have a little bit of research, but they don't have clinically relevant medical experiences. And so what are those experiences that, you know, you may still be able to do or may have missed out on is maybe volunteering. Uh, so volunteering at your local hospital or mission trips where you kind of go to foreign countries or just showing that you've shadowed in the past. So for instance, kind of, I used to volunteer at my local hospital, both in high school and undergrad. I never got the opportunity to do a mission trip, but I would have loved to. Um, and I did do a good amount of shadowing prior to going to med school. And then even in med school, I did some shadowing. And it is a great experience because when you shadow, you really get to see what different fields are like. You get to also see, is medicine, you know, something that you really are sure of? And I think for the most part, a lot of you do know that you want to go into medicine. And I would say it's a great decision. But if you're kind of unsure and you say, you know, you, you did it maybe engineering in college and you're deciding between med school or maybe pursuing a job in engineering, you know, shadowing is a great opportunity to see what it is like to be a doctor. And the other thing is that shadowing and doing scribing work, you get a good work-life balance. And, you know, I know I kind of am harping on this, but med school, you know, for everything that I've enjoyed about it, the one thing I will say is it was a lot of work, more work than I had ever spent in high school or college. And it was kind of a, just a whole different beast. And so it was, it would be nice to, you know, have that break before med school, kind of just have a good work-life balance, 
enjoy kind of the experience of like, you know, some of your other friends who maybe chose different fields, get to hang out with them, um, have a little bit of spending money for, you know, now and then for med school. And so kind of all that considered, I would say scribing is definitely a great option. Uh, how would you go about that? Many local hospitals or doctors are always looking for scribes. I would say the most common types of scribes are ER scribes and also just general specialty scribes. So for instance, I'm going into ophthalmology, very often they will use scribes. Ear, nose, and throat doctors will often use scribes, orthopedics, and there are definitely always a lot of scribe opportunities. It's especially something that I would recommend that I went into med school not knowing what field I wanted to do, but I had a lot of friends who day in said, I want to do orthopedics. You know, I, I got the opportunity to scribe with the doctor and I just felt like, you know, you know, and I had a friend who, who actually told me this. He said, you know, I would go into work and then the, I would feel like maybe a, an hour went by and then the day would be over. And he was explaining that it was just something he was enjoying. He was enjoying, you know, having seen those conversations with the patients. He was seeing like, you know, the physical exam maneuvers. And so he kind of got that early experience and knew that what he wanted to do. And let me tell you, it's a relief to know what field you want to choose because, you know, I can't wait for you guys to end up in med school. But even within med school, you have to figure out what field you want to do. The only other thing for this how section is, you know, you can always also ask your undergraduate school. If you're graduated, even if you're still in school, for the most part, in my experience, your undergraduate school will be more than happy to help you set up these types of opportunities. And so always reach out. Don't be, I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't feel like, you know, you're not a member of your school anymore. You're an alumni. And based on that, they're always willing to help their alumni. And so just ask them, do they have relationships historically with any doctors or hospitals? And they usually do, I would say. In terms of benefits, like we mentioned, it really can offer some financial stability. If you're doing, you know, a good amount of scribing work, the pay, I would say, is not the best, but it's definitely not the worst either. And it's definitely something you can make a living off of and something that you can potentially have some money saved over uh, in med school. And that's something I will say would come in handy. The other thing about scribing and shadowing is because it's structured hours, like I mentioned, it gives you a lot of opportunity for flexibility with your MCAT studying. And so guys, as you know, applying to med school, if really comes down to three main things is your GPA, your MCAT scores, and then kind of everything else. And the everything else is letters of recommendation, volunteering, and they all have like their own weight, but you do want to get a good MCAT score to set yourself up really well. And if you know that you're the type that needs the, you know, that has a set regimen for studying, you would really probably benefit the most from this type of scribing and shadowing where one, you can say that you still had a good experience and you have something to talk about during your interview, but also you're still giving that appropriate time to study for the MCAT. Now, the con is that this is the one where I would say is something that you really have to paint a really clear picture of what your role was. In that sense, I would say you have to um, make sure that you stress what you were doing when you were, when you were scribing. Because technically, you know, if scribing is what you make it. So if I was scribing in an ophthalmologist's office, uh, ophthalmologist office, I would explain that, yes, I was writing notes, I was kind of interacting with patients, getting a history, but I could also paint as a picture of, I was learning how to get a basic history for a patient. Well, I would say it is very experience-based, but if you have the opportunity to work with the, with the right doctor, they're more than welcome to answer your basic questions about you know, what it's like being a doctor, but even questions about the field, like you know, when you did this, why did you choose to get this test on this patient? So I see a couple questions here. They're asking about working as, for instance, EMT. Uh, and I would say working like as EMT or PCT in these instances, I would say that's very similar to this type of category of scribing and shadowing. And I would say that's equally a great opportunity. The big thing with, like I said, is how do you frame it? How do you say, not only were you doing an EMT, but highlight those experiences. Try to, you know, record experiences where you found particularly meaningful. So if you were an EMT and there was an emergency situation, and you saw the collaboration of the care team, whether you were the EMT working with the doctor and just kind of relaying information, you realize you know, the importance, but it really is all about how you frame it. And the, that's the beauty of these interviews is that if you go in prepared, you can really highlight your skill set and what you got from your gap year. So now the last category, and this is actually my personal favorite, it's definitely not for everyone, but it would be doing non-medically relevant work. Best people for this are ones who honestly, unfortunately, have a very well-rounded application, and they're just looking for a very unique work experience. Do you have to have everything in your application in terms of volunteering, research? No, but if you want to have at least like either if you're lacking research, you want to be pretty strong from like a volunteer shadowing uh, standpoint or vice versa. The other thing, and this is like a very specific case, is these are people 
sometimes you can have graduates who are admitted to med school and they'd like to defer their admission. And so different institutions have different rules, but for the most part, most medical universities, major medical universities, you can apply to be admitted and then say that you'd actually like to start next year. What work would you do? So you can try to do, you know, a lot of service jobs, I think, are the best way to portray yourself and still show show yourself off from an application standpoint. So I have some friends who have done uh, Teach for America. I had a friend who was very interested in kind of environmental awareness and knew ultimately that she wanted to be a doctor. But in between, like, you know, she was an environmental science major. So she chose to do an environmental awareness job as well prior to starting med school. And the other way I would say is finding a job, but, you know, I would say you would want to stray into the service related aspect because that's kind of who we are as doctors, right? We try to serve the, the greater people. And so they want to see that even, even during your gap year. And then, you know, always ask current medical students who did a gap year, you know, did you enjoy your experience? And even, you know, having not done a gap year, I would always ask my friends, like, you know, what did you think of your gap year? Did you find that it was particularly meaningful or helpful for you? And for the most part, I would say, yeah, I think that they would. And they were really happy, it seems, with kind of how everything went, both in terms of the experience from a just a learning perspective, but also just like having different life experiences. Now, this is something I'd really like to stress is that once you go into medicine, it's not going to be your life. Uh, a lot of people say that. And uh, I would say, you know, I still have a lot of other hobbies. I have a lot of things I like to enjoy. And I think that's important in medicine that it, you can feel like it's like, you know, a very busy lifestyle. But trust me, there's still enough time for fun and enjoyment. But the one thing is now, having been in med- medical school as a resident, my job is medicine. But it is nice that I would say to look back and say, hey, I did something completely different, unrelated to medicine. And that's, you know, when you look back, you at least had that opportunity to try a different job. As we mentioned with the other fields, it gives you a little bit of financial stability and once again, some more free time to study for the MCAT. The cons, and this is one something I'd really like to stress is you have to be an app, a good applicant in other regards, because otherwise from their instance, you're not showing that you're fully committed to medicine. You're committed to service, which is great, but there's many other jobs that you can also exhibit service. And so they're going to ask you, you know, why did you choose to do this during your time off? And so that's where, once again, you have to be very confident and say, I knew that I wanted to be a doctor for a long time. And I just, I've always had my other passions. And for them, they'd love to see that. They love to see people with different interests. And as long as you can kind of show off why you chose to do this specific field or, you know, industry for this, for your gap year, I can guarantee that they would really like to hear about that experience. So one question was, what are some other clinic jobs that an undergraduate can do that does not require training? I think what you're referring to would be to be an MA or to be a phlebotomist. But I would say that, for instance, one thing is, even if you're shadowing within a specific field, for instance, overshadowing or scribing within orthopedics, what you can do is you can ask them about, you know, a lot of them often will go to conferences. And so you can ask about opportunities at conferences. So you can maybe say, you know, and this would be a little bit more specific, but if you're interested in a specific field, you go to, why don't we do internal medicine since I've talked enough about ophthalmology. So if you want to go to an internal medicine conference, maybe a cardiology conference, there's very often opportunities to volunteer there. Either you can do minutes um, where you're kind of reporting what was, ter- what was discussed. You can kind of just help facilitate the conference, especially if it's in your local area, it's a great opportunity. It's not something that you can do consistently, but it is something that if you're doing scribing or if you're mainly doing shadowing and you're looking for another opportunity, you can always participate in those conferences. When we talk about like other kind of opportunities for this non-medically relevant work, I would say that doing a Fulbright scholarship, I actually had a friend, he did that exact thing. He, he went to a different country, he was teaching English, and he, he really can't talk enough about how wonderful of an experience that was. And so that's something I would highly, highly recommend. If you're the type of candidate that will do well for this non-medically relevant work, like, you know, you have a strong application, that's something I would definitely, definitely recommend doing like a Fulbright program or like, you know, those other type of cost scholarship programs where you're doing volunteerism. While we're talking about gap years, I do want to talk about, you know, the elephant in the room and that's getting your MCATs done. So I would say that one thing I have noticed is that with personal students or just like kind of talking to people that I've worked with before, you know, a lot of people will feel like they felt rushed into taking the MCAT and didn't get the score that they necessarily reflected what they were capable of. And part of that was that they felt this pressure that they have to apply to med school now. And because they have to apply now, they have to get the MCAT done. And then they don't get the score they want and they end up kind of putting everything back. 
and they're just kind of not happy with how everything worked out. So if you kind of go in with a plan of attack, knowing that you're going to take a gap year, then you can always have a much better plan of attack for how you're going to take care of the MCAT. So you, one, you can develop a structured schedule and you know, you'll know hopefully by the end of your undergraduate, what type of student you are. You can find out, you know, are you someone who's going to be someone who's chipping away at this MCAT content slowly but steadily throughout your year? And you, you know, you're very good at retaining knowledge, but for you, you benefit from kind of building on it day by day. Or are you someone who wants to do an intensive studying period? You ask off for off from your whatever kind of gap you're, you're pursuing, you ask for some lighter hours. Um, and once again, some are more flexible than others for accommodating that. You just want to study over uh, a certain period of time, six weeks, eight weeks, and just do some intensive studying and then kind of get it done. You know, like I said, it's all person to person. And that's something that I would say you want to take into account what type of student you are and what type of time you have um, when deciding what type of MCAT approach you want to do. The one thing I would like to kind of highlight here is that here at MST, we do have a wonderful team that can help you do that. Deciding how you want to approach the MCAT, we would kind of discuss. What, what has worked for you in the past? How have you done as an applicant? How have you done as a student in high school, in undergrad? And then we can help you come up with that optimal study plan. So overall though, you know, the big thing about a gap year is that it can be a great opportunity. It can be something that you look back on and you're saying, wow, I'm really glad I had this experience before med school. And the key here, I think, is just having very good goals. The first is honestly just using this opportunity, using this year to find out if medicine is the right choice for you. For a lot of you, I think it's something that you've known for a long time, but if you're kind of between two fields, the gap year gives you the opportunity to at least really, really evaluate what you're kind of going, getting into. Once you're in med school, you can always choose to change your career, but I would say once you're in, you're in. You've done all this hard work, so you want to make sure that it's a decision that's right for you, and for the most part, I would say it is. The other thing is it gives you time to really optimize your med school application, figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, almost as if you had a whiteboard and just kind of going over what, what do you think you can really show off about yourself? What do you think is lacking? And during the gap year, you can fill in those gaps of what's lacking. There's always opportunities to get involved. There's always opportunities to further your application and having that year under your belt gives you that time to do that. What else can we talk about? Well, you get time to finish your MCAT. Um, and I think that for the most part, a lot of people would have done better on their MCAT had they had the optimal amount of time to study. I think that it gives you time from a financial standpoint if you decide that you want to start a family or you want to spend more time with your current family. Um, it just gives you some extra benefit. And, you know, it is really nice to have that break and have some fun before med school starts. You know, like I said, you'll still have a lot of fun. You'll still be able to keep up with your hobbies. And I would say the, the best thing about a gap here is that helps you figure out if there's any new hobbies you want to develop that'll help you kind of uh, be that reprieve when you're really studying hard in med school. Really quickly though, I do want to talk a little bit more about what we do here at MST. What you can get is personalized guidance. And that's really key, you know, because nobody is the same applicant. You know, everyone who's here in this webinar is different in terms of their strengths, their weaknesses, what they bring to the table and what they'll be as a doctor. And so we understand that. And what we do is we do a very good job of kind of coordinating the type of student with the type of tutor and whether it's tutoring for the MCAT or whether it's getting prepared from the interview perspective, a lot of you would be able to get a lot of benefit from that, just getting that personalized attention. Not only do we do tutoring though, we do do personal statement edit and essay editing. Uh, and that's something that I have a, some, a good amount of experience in and also figuring out what school is right for you. Are you looking for a school that's, you know, for instance, Drexel was in an urban setting and that's honestly something I really enjoy just living in a city having that opportunity to um, see that patient population and also just have something to do after, um, after school. At the same time, you know, for me, it was also perfect because it was in the East Coast and we can also kind of figure out what school would be the right school for you. You know, whether it's something that you wanna do something more academic that has more of a research background. Um, we have a lot of experience in that. If you're at all interested, I say, you know, what would be the harm in getting in that free, free phone console and seeing what we can do for you. Overall, guys, it's been really fun. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys were able to kind of check in with us. If you ever have any personal questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Our contact information is listed below. If you reach out, if there's anything we, you need, um, and otherwise, I hope you, everyone has a great night.